Hey guys, welcome back to the Stuff of Legend. My name is Daniel, and I'm going to be talking about Avengers Infinity War. For those of you who haven't seen the movie, I implore you, go see it. You, you're definitely going to want to see it before you watch this video, alright? There's going to be lots of spoilers. In fact, that's all we're going to be talking about is spoilers, and specifically where everybody is. We're going to basically do a head count of everyone who is still around and those who might be in different areas, where they are, um, what the predominant theories are for where people might be. We're just going to kind of just dig into head counts for this one. I'm going to have my list right here in front of me. So first off, we're going to start with the dead. First, we have eight people that are presumed dead in Infinity War. For those of you guys who have seen the film, you know that it ends with the snap, right? And so we're not talking about the snap. With this, we're talking about those who were killed outside of the snap. So this is just regular, good old fashioned deaths. First up, we have Loki. Now the film kicks off with a really serious tone showing the ship of the escapees, those who are evacuating the Ragnarok of Asgard. We see that only some of these individuals, because there was a lot of people in Thor Ragnarok, you know, like you get Korg, you get uh, the Valkyrie. There's a number of people that were on the ship that, like Meek, that were not even shown when you uh, first arrive in Infinity War, because it starts out on that ship. So let's look at this. So we know that Loki was killed at the hand of Thanos. We know that Heimdall was killed on the ship. That makes two. We know that Ebony Maw, Proxima Midnight, Corvus Glaive, and Cole Obsidian, all of the known Black Order of Thanos are killed in Infinity War. And this happens through the course of the battles um, some of them earlier on in the fight with uh, Vision and Scarlet Witch when Cap and Black Widow show up and Falcon shows up. You know, there's a there's a fight that takes place. Corvus Glaive gets stabbed. They beam out of there and then we see a fight again. So I'm not going to get into how exactly. For those of you who have seen the film, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But all four of the Black Order are dead. And that includes Squidward <laughs> and the big guy. And, um, and so then in addition to that, we also know that Vision is presumed dead. Now I have an asterisk on Vision because it's uncertain whether or not his consciousness is completely gone forever. They explained in the movie that he is a very complex organism. It's He was comprised not just of the Infinity Stone, but of the consciousness of Tony, of Jarvis, of Bruce Banner. You know, there was a number of elements that were in there. Ultron, he had the potential to come to life as an AI without the Mind Stone, but the Mind Stone gave him like a spirit, you know, it kind of gave him a character and that was what Scarlet Witch fell in love with. And I'm going to put an asterisk on this because they talked about him surviving without the Mind Stone. Now they said it was going to take a, a really delicate process to remove it and we know that the way that it was move, removed was not very delicate. <laughs> it got ripped right out of his forehead at the hand of Thanos. We actually got to see him die twice because of the Time Stone, but I'm going to keep an asterisk on that one because it's unclear whether or not he is going to stay dead. If he does come back, he's he's not going to be the same. He's not going to be the same vision that Scarlet Witch fell in love with. And it's probably going to be a shatter point for her. That despite him coming back, maybe there's a miracle that he is coming back. He won't have the same feelings for her. He probably won't have the same memories outside of maybe visual recollection, like data. He'll basically be a computer instead of a person, the way that we've seen him. That's what a lot of people think and it's up to Marvel to just decide how they want that to play out. Um, another one with asterisks is Gamora. Now we saw her die. We saw her die hard. It was an emotional moment and uh, it was really tough, especially for me, I have a daughter. It was really, it was a weird moment to, to emotionally connect so deeply with Thanos in that moment as a dad, as he's, you know, the one thing that he loves the most is his daughter. It was touching. There's elements of how selfish can you be to sacrifice your daughter, you know, but then there's like, it's, it was rough just watching him like tear up and cry and he believes with his whole heart that he's doing the right thing. It's just, it's twisted, it's dark, but it, it was just tough to watch. But the point is that her soul was traded, not destroyed. Her soul was traded for the soul stone, a soul for a soul. It's believed that if they give the stone back, she might come back. There's other theories about this. Maybe she's trapped inside the soul stone. Maybe she gives the soul stone life by giving her life into the stone. Maybe she's trapped in some sort of soul realm, similar to what we saw in the Black Panther with the ancestral plane. So I'm gonna put asterisks on that one. A lot of people think that she's coming back, especially because James Gunn said that Guardians 3 is gonna be deeply about Gamora. And that could be about the tragedy of her death, or it could be that she is the main character and somehow she is coming back. We don't know. 
So um, asterisks on Vision, asterisks on Gamora. That's eight people dead. All right, eight people. Now we have assumed deaths. So this is assumed because we never saw it happen, but we're just kind of left to believe. Here's the assumed deaths. Number one is Valkyrie. Valkyrie was in Thor Ragnarok, but she was not in the ship in the beginning of Infinity War. So Valkyrie was not in the ship in Infinity War. But there was a lot of people that were not seen on the ship that were important figures in Ragnarok. And so we're either left to believe that they are A, assumed dead, or B, that half the ship or, or a number of the ship escaped right when Thanos began the attack with his ship. And among Valkyrie, there'd be Korg, Meek, and the Asgardian refugees. They're all either presumed dead or half of them escaped and we still don't have that part of the story. So we're going to assume death for now. Just play it safe, maybe get a surprise later. Also, the Xandarians. So Xandar from Guardians of the Galaxy. It opens and he ha already ha Thanos already has the Power Stone in the Gauntlet. And this is very significant because that's part of the origin story for Nova. The destruction of Xandar is pivotal in the origin story for Nova. Daenerys Day, I think that's I think I'm saying his name right. He's the guy that was played by the actor who's in Step Brothers. He's a sole survivor of Xandar and he takes the helmet of Nova Prime and he goes to Earth and he basically does the Green Lantern thing where he commissions somebody to be worthy of it and you know here you're you're the last Nova. And then Richard Ryder or in recent comics, Sam Alexander gets the helmet and they become Nova. He's the human rocket. He's really quippy. Um, he teams up with Spider-Man in the animated series. It's really fun. So the destruction of Xandar is just crucial for that. And they mention that Xandar has been destroyed and that's how Thanos acquired the Power Stone. He took it from the Nova Corps, which was left there at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy 1. We know that the Xandarians are destroyed. We have to assume that they're all dead. Or at least most of them. Maybe there's one sole survivor to take that helmet back to Earth and we'll eventually get Nova. I think that's probably what's going to happen. But either way, the Xandarians are dead. That's five assumed deaths if you include the refugees as one and then the Xandarians as one. And then as well as that, we also have the Titans. So the people of Thanos' homeworld we know was destroyed. Thanos' homeworld, Titan, uh, that was the whole premise of the movie. I won't get too deep into that, but you guys can review some of the other videos on other channels that are like this where we discuss movies and TV. I'll make a video, there'll be a lot more to discuss there, but uh, just to save on time, I'll skip ahead. The Titans have been either evacuated or destroyed, and we believe they were destroyed because that was why it was so crucial for Thanos to stop the destruction of the universe, uh, because that happened to him on his home planet. Also, we know that Nowhere, the location, the giant celestial head, that place called Nowhere, where the Collector made his home, that place was completely desolate. And we believe that either A, they were evacuated, probably not, or B, they were killed off. And it, the whole place was on in flames. I mean, it looked pretty bad. It looked like they were dead. So people must have died. So we believe that the people of nowhere were also dead. So that's seven assumed deaths, right? We have eight confirmed kills, two of them with asterisks, and seven assumed deaths. Now, alive, we have, now here's where it gets interesting. So we have the living, the people that remained alive through all of this. We have Thor, Captain America, Iron Man, Black Widow, War Machine, Rocket Raccoon, Okoye, M'Baku, Wong, Nebula, Bruce Banner the Hulk, Thanos, the Red Skull, and Eitri, the Dwarf. That's a lot. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with this thought. All of the original members of the Avengers are still living. This was a huge shock, a huge surprise, and it leaves us wanting more. You know, it leaves us so conflicted about not only where we thought it was going to go, but we realize now that the story's not finished. So I'll leave you guys with that, but that is 14 characters in the main plot of the movie that we know are still alive at the end. In the erased by the Soul Stone category, so when the snap happens, People start to dust out. People start to turn to ash. And I'm going to go ahead and list those members. So erased by the Soul Stone, we have Bucky the White Wolf, the Winter Soldier. We have the Black Panther. We have Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Mantis, Drax, Star-Lord, Scarlet Witch, Falcon, Maria Hill, Nick Fury, and Groot. And so these are all the people that we see dust out because of the snap. Now the snap is supposed to erase half the life in the universe, right? And it takes away a lot of the people we did not believe were going to be part of that snap disappearance. 
Um, if Thanos should succeed, which we now know that he did, those were definitely not the people we thought, because those are the people, a lot of them, have sequels on the way. They're already discussing the sequels to Spider-Man Homecoming, Black Panther 2, Doctor Strange. You know, we're, they're talking about um, another Guardians of the Galaxy. There's a lot of characters here that are either new to the franchise or that we're just starting to get familiarized with and they have plans for the future, those are the ones that disappeared. So now we're thinking, okay, they must not be dead, but how? And so this is like the great mystery that Marvel presents us with. And it was very interesting, um, very shocking to see the choice that Marvel made to make those individuals disappear. Now we're left with the uncertain. In the uncertain, we have Shuri, who was in the movie, but after the snap, we never saw what happened to her. We didn't know if she was one that disappeared or one that was still alive. They never resolved that. The Collector, when we saw him in the film, it was an illusion. It was Thanos' illusion. And we never saw what officially happened to him. That remains unsolved, whether or not he got off of nowhere or if he was killed in the process. We don't know. The Grand Master from Thor Ragnarok, the Collector's brother. Um, we don't know what happened to him. We still have no idea. Hela from Ragnarok. Ragnarok leaves off right at the beginning of Infinity War. And it's theoretically still being torn apart. We don't know what happened to Hela. And we also don't know what happened to Surtur. Surtur's still out there somewhere tearing up, Ra tearing up uh, Asgard, causing Ragnarok. So that's still happening. Lady Sif, we have no idea where she is. We did not get to see her in Thor Ragnarok. She was busy filming some other projects. And so because of that, it was uh, very uh, fortunate for her that she is now going to have to be part of either a future project or she just simply didn't get killed off to our knowledge. We still have no idea where she's at. Pepper Potts and Ned Leeds. Both of them were in the beginning of the movie and both of them were not at the end. We have no idea what happened to them. They could be disappeared. When we pick up in the next Avengers film, we might find out that they disappeared. They were erased from existence and that could be very sad. Very tragic way to let in the new story. That'd be very tragic. Vision, I put an asterisk here because we don't know if he was just deactivated because of the loss of his power source. He might get reactivated. We have no idea. He's kind of up in the air. It could go either way. Now, this is where it gets interesting is Hawkeye and his family. We don't know what's going to happen there. Maybe his motivation in the next film, when we see him, it's going to be because maybe all of his family got destroyed in the snap. Maybe they all got erased. And maybe he has nothing left to live for but vengeance. And he goes out as the Ronin. We, we don't know what's going to happen there, but it would cause some great motivation there. And that's uncertain. Uh, we don't know what's what's going on with Hawkeye, because he wasn't in the movie, to our knowledge. And then the Barton family, we don't know what's going on there. Ant-Man and the Wasp, we also don't know what's happening there, and Marvel's already put out teasers about that. Where was Ant-Man and the Wasp during Infinity War? What's going on with them? We have no idea. And so we're still waiting for the movie. I'm super excited. I can't wait for the Marvel's first romantic comedy. That's going to be amazing. I just, I love Paul Rudd in that role. Um, Evangeline Lilly is a, a great actress. I loved her in The Hobbit. I loved her in Lost. Just awesome. I'm really excited that she's on board. And then uh, that's it for the uncertain. So that's 13 of them. Now, the reference and tease, this is the last part, is Captain Marvel was teased in the end credits. And I'm super excited for that. Um, that has already, I believe, begun shooting. You know, we've already seen set pics and we've seen like a lot of cool uh, teases about the costume. That movie's gonna take place back in the 90s. We know that Ronan and Clark Gregg and then Korath are all coming back for that film. It'll be cool. I have no idea what's gonna happen, but it's gonna be awesome. Adam Warlock was teased at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy 2. We still have no idea what's gonna happen there, which direction they wanna go, if they want him to pursue the gauntlet. Also, at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy 2, we have the Ravagers and the original Guardians. So the original Guardians team was very different from the one that we got presented with uh, James Gunn's Guardians. But Stallone and uh, Michael Rosenbaum, they might come back and we might get another type of Guardians team. So they were teased and they might have some effect on the storyline for Avengers 4. So everything I just listed, all of that, that is all yet to come. All these characters, the dead, the alive, the uncertain, the tease, the reference, erased by the soul stone, all of these things, there's so many characters, but they're all moving around like chess pieces. And the next Avengers film, it's got us all on the edge of our seat because of the way that this one left off. And whether or not you had a feeling they were gonna go this route, I don't think you did, I don't think anybody did. I saw so many videos about theories on how the movie was gonna go and not one of them lined up with this. Not mostly, not partly. Some people got some stuff right, but nobody got most of it right, nobody. And so um, I'm really excited, I love the movie. I loved it so much, I saw it twice. Uh, I plan to see it again. Um, I just, 
I can't wait for the next films. I can't wait for Ant-Man and the Wasp. I can't wait for Captain Marvel. That's going to be amazing. And um, I'm going to have a lot more discussion on that coming, coming very soon. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you like this video, give it a like. If you loved it, share it with those you love. And please make sure to comment down below. And uh, just go back and forth with me on these questions. If there's anybody that I left out, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. And also, um, just make sure to uh, please subscribe if you have not. And then hit the notification bell to be alerted right away when I upload my next video. Or when I go live next time. So we can interact in the comments together and maybe I can answer some of your questions. That would be a lot of fun. I'd have a blast doing that. And I love talking about this stuff. You guys already know that. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been another episode of... The Stuff of Legend.